Today I will be showcasing my endgame build for Id, a character that specializes on dishing out tons of damage by switching between his three different forms, transforming into a dragon and then entering god mode. He is by far my favorite character in the game and I'm very excited to finally talk about him. I'll be going through all the skills, sigils, weapons and overall optimizations so that you can get the most out of this character and build. There is a lot to go through so without any further ado, hello everyone my name is Dark Hero, if you are enjoying my build and guide videos let me know which character I should cover next and subscribe for more. So it is actually quite the complex character, being able of dealing incredible amounts of damage all the while being a very fast and agile character that can fulfill various roles on the team. So let's start with his basic attacks, nothing too special, but the main thing here is that after any of these attacks you can go into a triangle attack to start doing these big lunges that have some pretty decent range actually, and when you do a combo finisher your meter will fill up, and whenever that ring becomes fully red, like so, you transform into your dragon mode. When you do so you gain stout heart and you have increased stats while you are in dragon form. And now that same gauge will indicate how long you have in this dragon form until it runs out. In dragon mode you even have access to different entire movesets, being able to deal insane amounts of damage with these very fast close swipe attacks and also capable of long distance combat with these projectiles that you can spam and then go into a huge beam that deals plenty of damage. You additionally also get a complete different set of skills and these 4 skills are always going to be the same regardless of what you equip on it, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Additionally while in human form, it can go ahead and charge his heavy attack, like so and once it starts glowing, you'll be able to dish out more damage and have these very powerful attacks. Additionally you can follow up any of your offensive skills, so let's go ahead and use Unbound with a triangle attack which will lead into this big combo and you'll perform a combo finisher which will fill up your meter even faster. So this would be the difference between using your basic triangle combo, as you can see it fills up just a little bit of my meter, but if I were to charge it up all the way, like so, let's go ahead and do this, it already fills it up almost halfway. So again, it is all about using his skills and then following it up with combo finishers to then be able to enter dragon mode very quickly. But let's go over its skills first before we talk about dragon mode and also before we talk about god mode. So firstly we have unbound which I used before, which is this big shockwave that leads into this quick combo and then a combo finisher. Scorch is this very wide sword sweep then again leads into this combo and the final finisher. All pretty simple stuff as of yet. Never enough is this gap closer, where it will perform a combo after, and then based on how much you deal, it will heal for a portion of that damage dealt. So let's go ahead and do it again. And then you heal for 6000, and then you can follow it up with the same combo finisher. Be careful though, because the amount of time it takes for you to do the combo finisher is actually a little bit. You still have to do that animation where it kind of places his hand in his chest, so just keep that in mind. And finally we have Regine Leaf Recidive, which is this projectile which then leads into a gap closer with a combo finisher. As for the rest of its skills, Arcadia is this big AoE slow that just provides some party wide utility for it and it actually lasts a pretty decent amount of time. Fourfold Vengeance is this very big charged attack and as long as you're charging it, it will be taking damage. It has 4 different charge levels and once you're finally ready to unleash it, it deals crazy amounts of damage. You don't lose a lot of health, so it's not something I would say goes well with a skill like Enmity for example, but it's just something for you to keep in mind while you're trying to use this very powerful move. Ragnarok form, as you can see you simply press the button and you immediately turn into your dragon form regardless of how much meter you have. And one thing about turning into dragon form is that, let's say we use all our cooldowns, 
and then go back into human form. If we were to use Ragnarok form to go into dragon mode again, all of our cooldowns would be back. That being said, there is one important thing about Ragnarok form in regards to god mode, which I'll go over in a moment. Lastly, we have the skill atonement, where you're able to take damage in place of your allies while you're doing this, and the more damage you take, the more damage you'll be able to dish out whenever you finally cancel it out and do the skill. This is a fantastic skill to use, especially in the endgame if you want it to give some party-wide utility to cover your teammates, and the endgame includes a lot of bosses that will fill up a very large portion of the arena where people will take damage, and so being able to cover your teammates this way is going to be very helpful. Now let's talk about Dragon Mode. I've already shown you the basic different combos that you have in Dragon Mode, but I did not tell you that whenever you land a combo finisher within this mode, you'll gain that small blue increment on your gauge. Just like we had to fill up the red gauge to get into Dragon Mode, we're going to have to fill up that blue gauge to enter God Mode. And again, you do this by performing combo finishers either with the square button, and keep in mind that to do this combo finisher, you just have to spam the square button, you don't actually press the triangle button, and with the triangle button, you just keep on spamming it, and eventually you'll get this big beam. Like so. So now let's talk about the different Dragon Mode skills before we talk about God Mode. Most of these are actually just upgraded versions of the already existing skills. As you'll notice, they have the same name, and so for the most part, they'll be upgraded versions. So Never Enough is also a gap closer that deals that big damage, and although you can't follow it up into a combo finisher right away, it knocks up opponents, and you have plenty of time to get into a proper combo. And just look at that damage for a gap closer. Now Arcadia is also an AoE slow, but this time it applies burn, and because you have this slow in dragon form, that is why I don't like to take up a slot in human form to use it. Regine Leaf Recidive, again I'm trying my best here with the spelling, is the upgraded version of our long range projectile, but this time firing 3 different projectiles. And you cannot follow it up with anything, you have to wait for the animation to finish, but the cool thing about it is that you can actually dodge plenty of attacks by doing this as you'll be up in the air. And finally, Scourge is this big AoE laser that covers almost 180 degrees and deals a ton of damage. Like so. And actually against a lot of boss fights, especially in the late game where they're huge, Scourge will hit them multiple times, so it is going to be that much more powerful. And again, you can't follow it up with any sort of combo finisher, you have to perform a regular combo. Now one thing to note about its basic attack combo is that if you just throw it out basically you're going to do these big slashes that lunge you forward but also have a pretty long commitment and what you really want to go for is that big very fast claw attack right there. As you can see as long as you keep on finishing the combo you'll be able to spam these right away. Alternatively you can do the same with any of the other skills. Like so. As you can see, despite these being ranged skills, they let you go into the claw combo very quickly, which is what you want to do to be able to enter god mode as fast as possible. Like so. You don't actually need to fill up the entire gauge to reach god mode, you just need to perform 4 combo finishers, it can be a combination of the ranged combo or the claw combo, it really doesn't matter. As long as you perform 4, you'll be able to enter god mode. Now in god mode, all of your skills actually perform something a little bit different. So if we use never enough, we get a little bit of a different animation, you still heal, but then you're able to follow it up with this much more powerful combo finisher, and then you have this massive combo which leads into that huge AoE attack. However, whenever you do that, you're going to exit god mode, but there is a way to extend it so you can keep on repeating that a couple more times. And keep in mind that link attacks will also give you one out of the four marks you need to enter god mode. Your basic attack combo is still pretty much the same thing, nothing too special, but as long as you don't go into this very fast moving combo, you can still be in god mode for a little while. With Unbound you still get this much more powerful projectile and then you follow it up into that combo and again we get into this very fast multi-hit combo. You can even use a link attack in the middle and again whenever you perform that big AoE hit you're going to be exiting god mode. 
And here's the upgraded version of the Regine Leaf Residive. It becomes a much stronger projectile that will hit multiple times, like so. And of course, you can follow it up with a combo finisher. And if I were to continue, I would go into that big combo that would end God Mode. So it's important that when you enter god mode, you still use your cooldowns and do their combo finishers before you go into the big finisher and exit god mode so you get the most out of it. Now Ragnarok form, which is the skill that allowed us to instantly turn into a dragon, has the added benefit of instantly refilling your god mode meter. So let's go ahead and use it. And we're back up to full, like so. Now of course it has a very long cooldown, but what this allows you to do is, let's say you enter god mode, you go in, do your combos and combo finishers, like so, use all of your cooldowns, and then we're going to go ahead and do the big finisher, so as you go into the big combo finisher, just as you do the final hits, you perform Ragnarok mode and you get to regain the meter so you can keep on using your enhanced skills and do the big finishing combo one more time. Like so. Another thing you can do is time your god mode with lane time for you to be able to unleash even more devastating combos. So now that we are in god mode, let's do a combo finisher. Activate lane time. And now you can just keep on spamming this. You're going to be able to unleash one of these big finishers. And your meter doesn't run out, so you can go ahead and do one more. And so your meter doesn't run away, you go ahead and use Ragnarok form. And you're able to repeat it one more time, being able to unleash three of these powerful devastating finishers back to back to back. So that is the big key to dealing as much damage as possible with it. It's all about unleashing your skills, using their follow-up attacks to then build up your meter, going to dragon mode, unleashing your powerful skills in combination with your powerful combos and combo finishers depending on what the situation demands, and entering god mode to then use the same skills that you didn't use before, use the follow-up combo finishers, like so, pop the Ragnarok form right before it goes away, so you can do it even one more time. And of course, if you had link time during all of this, you would be able to use it even more. So as you can see, there is quite a lot to Id, but in actual practice, he's not that complicated of a character. Now let me show you what gear I'm running on my Id, and what I think are the best weapons and sigils for you to use to get the most out of this character. Firstly, for your weapons, of course you ideally want to craft all of them and level all of them up, but in my opinion, you'll either want to go with the Susano, which is the Ascension weapon. Sadly, I am just shy of being able to show you what the final form looks like, but simply put, being able to get the fantastic stats that you gain from it as well as damage cap, which is one of the most important traits in the entire game, is going to be incredibly beneficial for it. And of course the Terminus weapon which I have yet to unlock as it is a random drop from the level 150 final boss will also be one of the two better options when it comes to your weapons. Now as for your sigils, there is quite a lot to talk about in here. Of course you'll want to go with damage cap as I've already explained. Skilled Assault is actually very very good on it as well. Since you have access to a second set of skills that you can use, you'll be able to take even better advantage of this sigil that will increase the damage of your skills, potentially even doubling it at max level. Combo Booster which will gradually boost the damage of each of your successive hits is also a very powerful sigil to use on it given that most of his combos and combo finishers include fast multi-hitting attacks and even some of his skills are able to hit the enemies multiple times and so this ends up being a no-brainer. But because it also relies a lot on his combo finishers, the combo finisher sigil is also going to be extremely valuable as that is able to increase your damage output on your big finish finishers, including the big god mode finisher, by up to 50% at max level. I also found Cascade to be a very powerful sigil on Id, as it is going to shorten your skill cooldown whenever you hit an enemy, up to 2%, with this further reducing the cooldown of your skills whenever you land a combo finisher. And as Id, you're going to be doing that a lot. Someone actually pointed this out on my Vein build video, which I'm very thankful for, as Cascade I found to be a very powerful sigil on this type of character. 
Other than that, you can also go with the more general sigils, like Break Assassin, to deal up to 200% more damage whenever an enemy is broken, or on the other hand, Overdrive Assassin, to deal up to 100% extra damage whenever the enemy is in overdrive. Finally, we have Id's signature sigils, with Versalius Ignition granting Drain and Stout Heart to Id, and boost his damage while he is in God Might, which is what I call God Mode. So with this, you'll be able to simply increase your damage cap by 30% while you are in your most powerful state. And as I stated before in this video and many others in the past, damage cap is one of your most valuable stats and being able to increase it by any other means other than the use of the damage cap sigils is going to be fantastic. And just being able to recover HP as well as gaining stout heart, which is going to make your attacks uninterruptible, makes this sigil a must-have for it. Sadly, I don't even have it yet, since I have not been farming Gold Dahlia badges. That being said, its second signature sigil, Versalis Foundation, will boost the amount of gauge that you receive whenever you perform a triangle attack. Now this is pretty beneficial, but I would not say that it is incredibly important. I'm actually not a huge fan of this sigil, since for the most part it's not going to change much on your average gameplay, as you are able to still use a couple of skills, and follow them up with combo finishers, like so. And with these two skills, we don't even have to use the link attack, you'll be able to enter dragon mode just fine. So what this sigil allows you to do is to use a skill followed by a combo finisher, and then you're able to use your regular combos just fine, and you'll still be able to reach dragon mode quite easily. And if you simply do a skill followed up by the combo finisher, like so, and then perform a charged attack, you'll be able to enter dragon mode, whereas you would not have been able to without the sigil. Personally, I don't like it very much, but it does have its uses, especially when your skills are on cooldown, likely because you use them during god mode, so in that situation where you're not able to use any skills, being able to generate your dragon meter a little bit faster is going to be quite nice. Now let's take a look at my endgame gear for id. I've already shown you that I'm using the Ascension weapon. As you can see, I also imbued a right stone with critical hit rate 7 and combo finisher 5. I have 5 damage cap sigils. I would be able to remove one of them if I had them all leveled up to max, but since I'm not quite there yet, I have to add an extra damage cap. I could replace this damage cap 4 with a damage cap 5, but as I currently am because of my weapon, I'm able to reach damage cap 65, which is the highest level, and I still get to equip this sigil which also gives me drain level 7 which is a nice bonus being able to hit as you deal damage. Critical damage 5 is also a very nice bonus because as you can see down below I have a 77% crit rate chance and so being able to boost the damage of most of my hits by 31% which would be 35 at level 15 whenever I max out my sigil would be quite the benefit. I also have combo booster 5 for the reason I explained earlier and a couple of combo finishers 5 which ideally would be both leveled up all the way to level 15 although because I have combo finisher in my right stone currently I'm able to reach combo finisher level 27. So ideally I would level up this sigil to level 15 and then I would have cascade 5 as part of my right stone to be able to reach the cap of this trait. I also have improved dodge at max level because it is one of the best sigils in the game when it comes to defensive options as it boosts your dodge count by 4 and also increases your iframes whenever you're trying to dodge so it is a very valuable sigil. Finally, I have the Versalis Foundation, the signature sigil that I don't like very much, but I will be replacing this with the other one as soon as I get it. Although ideally, you would be able to gain an awakened version that would come with both sigils. And of course, if you have crabby resonance at max level because you've been picking up the crabs, or you have the sigil that adds elemental weakness to every enemy in the game, I would go ahead and use those instead of improved dodge. Now let's go ahead and take on a proud difficulty quest where I can show off just how powerful it really is, especially in the endgame. So let's go ahead and take on this proud fire worm. Let's go ahead and use our unbound, go into a combo finisher. And we already enter dragon mode. Sadly, I missed the link attack, but that's totally fine. Let's dodge that. 
use never enough as a gap closer and get into building up that god mode right away. And let's use Scourge, big big damage, use Arcadia for that big slow. I actually didn't expect the fire to affect the fire worm, but it did, and now we enter god mode. Sadly, Cagliostro died, but that is totally fine. We don't have any skills to use, so let's go ahead and unleash the big powerful combo. And before it runs out, we use Ragnarok form to be able to do it one more time. And just look at that insane damage output. Go ahead and use that link attack to build up our meter even faster. Sadly, I was not doing one of my follow up attacks, my combo finisher, and so I took that in the face, but that's fine since we can regenerate health with never enough. Ooh, we perfect time that as we enter dragon form. As you saw right there, Scorch hit him multiple times which is going to happen very often against large enemies like so. Use a few Lost Slashes, he's going to be doing his main mechanic, so we have to dodge these. Perfect dodge it. As you can see, this becomes very easy, especially since I'm using the Sigil that lets me dodge more times and have more iframes on my dodge. So let's use Never Enough. As a gap closer, big big damage, use Arcadia for the slow, let's use our ranged attack right before we get out of dragon form, just so that we use it, and now that we're in god mode, let's go ahead and use this, more big finisher, Ragnarok form is not going to be ready right away, but we still deal plenty of damage. We're able to unleash that, and since our SBA gauge is full all around, Narmaya is going to go ahead and use her SBA gauge. Now normally I actually like to be the one to initiate the SBA, because its combos are so long, I don't like to be interrupted or have to stop the combos midway through just to do the input, but since we were in human form that was totally fine. It would have been worse if we were in god mode or in dragon form. But now that the dragon is broken, let's go ahead and try to break the horn. Oh, it looks like we already did. I didn't even notice. Enter dragon mode and unleash hell upon this worm. Nice, we got link time. Sadly, I'm not in god mode yet. It would have been very, very good to time this properly. Might actually be able to enter it right before it runs out. I don't think it's going to count. Yeah, we do unleash our gauge, sadly. And we don't have Ragnarok available yet. So we're doing quite well so far. Only Cagliostro has died once. And again, this is on proud mode, the hardest difficulty in the game. I don't even think I have any heals on this team. I think just everybody's sustaining themselves. Which is what I like about having Vayne and Armaya on the team. They're quite competent AI companions. Look at that damage. Big range damage. 100k above. Use the gap closer. And now he's in overdrive, that's fine. Let's go ahead and use our laser attack since I haven't used it all this time. It also deals plenty of damage. But of course the claw attack ends up dealing more DPS, since you can only do it at close range. But because a lot of bosses will typically be away from your range for a pretty decent amount of time, having the ability to attack them from a distance is very valuable. And now we enter god mode, we already have the SBA gauge available. And I have Ragnarok form again, so I'm going to try to use this well. Do some big damage. Cagliostro dies again, sadly. That's fine. We missed the final hit, I believe, but we do have Ragnarok form, so we're able to maintain god mode for a little longer. I'm gonna go ahead and use all of my skills in god mode before I unleash the big finisher. Oh, 
Darmai is gonna go ahead and use the SVA gauge again one more time. And I'm going to be doing the big finisher. Look at that crazy damage. I might as well follow up with my own SVA. And the Fireworm is just about to die. And just like that, the Fireworm goes down. Very clean hunt as you saw right there. It is incredibly powerful and able to dish out a ton of damage at all times. And again, I'm still missing the final awakening for my ascension weapon, so I still have to deal with this gremlin for a little bit. With that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this id showcase. As I said many times before, he is my favorite character in the entire game. Let me know which character I should cover next. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Dark Hero, and as always, happy hunting. Tasker.